What's going on guys? Today we're talking about some spicy dumbbell only bicep training exercises. Now, before we dive into those exercises, I wanna ask that you just give me one minute of your time as we talk about two points that are gonna make you way more strategic with your bicep training. Number one is remembering the muscles that constitute the elbow flexion and the upper arm. So there are three major muscles I want you to think about. Number one is the brachioradialis. This muscle works in synergy with the biceps brachii and the brachialis to create forearm flexion at the elbow joint. The second muscle I want you to think about is the brachialis. This just covers the elbow joint and it's primarily used in elbow flexion. And then of course, we have the biceps brachii, the multi-headed muscle that crosses the shoulder and elbow joint. And this muscle's main job is to one, again, flex the elbow, supinate the wrist, and assist in shoulder elevation. Once we remember each of these muscles and what they are designed to do, we can then isolate accordingly and shift emphasis on one over the other based on the adaptation we're trying to go for. The second point I wanna cover is remembering what we're actually trying to do when we're trying to create and target elbow flexion. So when we move through any curling motion or when we're trying to really isolate elbow flexion, we wanna remember that we want that shoulder to remain relatively static and in place and we wanna work around that elbow joint. So no matter what angle you're performing your exercise at, we want that shoulder to remain relatively still and fixed, and we wanna work around the elbow. Make the elbow flexors do the work and don't shift emphasis into the delts, the back, and so forth. With those two points in mind, let's dive into our exercise. The first movement is the incline dumbbell curl. I love this exercise and make it a staple in all of my bicep training because it truly disadvantages the bicep there and we get to work through a meaningful concentric contraction and then a meaningful lengthening eccentric contraction. And by allowing that elbow to kind of free float there, we can really disadvantage this muscle group and double down on the work we're trying to put onto the bicep. So add this into your program, set your bench to about 60 degrees, keep those hands in a relatively supinated position and focus on keeping those elbows tight to the bench to get a meaningful contraction. And if you want, add tempos to kick up the intensity of this movement. The second exercise we're going to be talking about is the single arm spider curl. Why have I been doing it single arm? Well, I noticed that with two dumbbells, myself and a lot of my clients end up using momentum and swinging. And then if you try to isolate that and just use a single dumbbell, you end up leaning to one side. So by adding that counterweight there, I'm learning that it's a lot easier to really keep that elbow focused on being in a static position and then using the elbow flexors to work around it to create a really strong and meaningful contraction. Try that out if you learn, if you notice that in the spider curl you're using any momentum to curl the weight. The third variation is the Zotman curl. This is an awesome exercise for anyone trying to build their forearms and their biceps. So at the bottom we're going to start in a stretched supinated position. We're going to curl up similar to an incline or a dumbbell curl for that matter. And then we are going to pronate the hand at the top. Now if you have cranky elbows or you notice that you get any form of issues and discomfort in the elbow when doing bicep training, don't pronate all the way. Stop your pronation a little bit shy of what a normal like parallel pronated grip would be, and then do the eccentric loading pattern as you normally would and supinate at the bottom to repeat your next rep. The fourth exercise is the preacher curl. Now I know a lot of you know how to do a preacher curl, but I wanna talk about a common mistake that I see with this movement. So a lot of folks will do these with the elbow having, or the arm for that matter, having space in between the bench and the body. And so what that looks like is a nice little gap in between the armpit and the bench. Try to limit that space and press the back of the arm into the bench. That's gonna give you a more meaningful and true contraction versus using leverage and gravity to work that weight up when you have that more free floating position. The fifth variation we are covering is the tempo dumbbell curl. Now. I know you know how to use a dumbbell curl or do a dumbbell curl for that matter, but what I want you to focus on, and, and this is as opposed to adding just a straight up tempo for the concentric knee centric, really focusing on that mid rep two second tempo. So right when we hit about 30 degrees, we're slowing down doing a two second tempo to about 60 to 70 degrees, we're completing the rep, and then we're doing the exact same thing on the eccentric loading pattern. If we think about the bicep, it's gonna be strongest at 90 degrees. So if we really wanna use a lot of external load or focus on the natural strength curve of the bicep, by focusing on this range of motion in both the concentric and eccentric, we're, be, we're able to do so in a meaningful way. So try these out. It's like a hyperactive or like hyper-focused two-second midway tempo. The final exercise is the half-kneeling hammer curl. 
This exercise has been interesting and I've been playing with it more and more because I notice in the hammer curl I tend to swing the weight a lot. And if I'm doing alternating, I'll still use momentum. So by going into a half kneeling single dumbbell curl or hammer curl position, I'm noticing that I'm able to keep that elbow a lot tighter to the body and do, well, let's call them more true reps here. I think as we get into an unstable position with the body, we kind of stabilize the elbow a little bit better, and that's why I've been liking this variation. If you've made it this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate you. Check out the description down below. I've actually dropped a PDF where I listed all these exercises and provided cues for performing them to your best abilities. If you haven't already, guys, drop a like, drop a subscribe. It helps motivate me and keeps me churning out a lot of videos. If you have any other questions about bicep training, drop them below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.